I'm sure you're wondering what's going on, and I can assure you, it's not as it first appears. I know a butler, a body lying on the floor. You may have even heard gunshots earlier. Yes, he was murdered, but it was someone else who shot him. Uh, perhaps I should better explain. You see, while the course of events ended here only moments ago, they began hours before. Others had all been called here by Mr. Walters. This is his house. By the way, that's Mr. Walters over there. This is rather complex. I think it would be best if I just take you back and let you see the course of events yourself. I can never do the story justice in my own words. Imagine it's now earlier this evening. And as I said, others had all been called to meet with Mr. Walters. And, uh, oh dear, uh, Mr. Walters. Mr. Walters? Steve! You need to get up. But I'm dead. Yeah, I know. But these people came to see a story. We can't very well show the events of how you were murdered with you sitting on your chair dead. But I've been shot. No, see, it, it's earlier now. You won't be shot for some time yet. Do you think it'll be okay? They won't be upset if a dead man suddenly stands up and walks away? They'll understand. They came to see a story, not to watch you sit in your chair. Go ahead, get up. All right. Well, I wasn't really prepared for this. I was expecting to be dead. I know, but it's for the best. What do I do now? To start, just go wait in the other room or something. All right. I sure hope you know what you're doing. <laughs> so do I. <clears throat> well, as I was saying, several people had all been called here by Mr. Walters. This is Betty Dupree, an old flame of Mr. Walters. She still intends to marry him, but not for the right reasons. And here is Jennifer Jones, Mr. Walter's business partner. Mia Comfrey. Mr. Walter's current, he loves her, and she loves his money. And finally, there's Preston Lavender, Lydia's friend, enough said. So there you have it. You've met everyone. And with that, I give you the murder of Stephen Walters. I know why we're here. You're his business partner. And you're his fiance. But you two could be a bickering. And I certainly don't know why you're here. Because I was the future Mrs. Walters long before you ever came into the picture. Was is the key word there. Ladies, ladies, please. Must you bring him everywhere? Hey, I was invited too, just like you. Yeah, sure. I bet you were. As you may have gathered, these folks don't exactly get along. They never have. To be quite honest, they're not the easiest of people to get along with. Who's he talking to? Who are you talking to? The audience. That's just great. Go ahead and spoil the illusion. No, I, I'm simply trying to, you know, work. You're ruining the story. I'm just, you know, being You've the narrator. You've our pace. I'm acting as the narrator, just as I'm supposed to do. Oh, now I suppose you're going to be telling them how it ends. They know how it ends. What? What? Yeah, they know how it ends. And they don't mind knowing the end up front. Yeah. What's the point? This is supposed to be a mystery, you know. How much mystery can there be when they know how it ends? While it's true they know how it ends, they don't know who did it, only that it was done. Is it how a big part of the mystery? It can be, but in this case the real mystery is who, not how. And they don't mind knowing the end up front? I mean, they're still here, aren't they? Well, that guy on his couch has yawned three times already. I, I think he's about to fall asleep. Well, he won't fall asleep if you guys just stick to the script and keep the story moving ahead. So it's our fault now? Let's just get back to the story, okay? Thank you. As I was saying, there is no great love shed amongst any of these folks. To put it most bluntly, they hate each other. But in that hate is the one common thread that brings them here today. As much as they may despise each other, they all hate Stephen Walters even more. I still don't know how I feel about you talking to the audience like that. I just don't get it. 
It's been done for thousands of years. It's called an aside. A what? An aside. Theoretically, when I'm speaking to the audience, you're not supposed to hear me. That's silly. We're right here. How can we help but hear you? You don't understand. Of course you can hear me. But you're supposed to go on as though you can't. It's an opportunity for me, as the narrator, to speak with the audience. It's almost as though I'm having a personal conversation with each member of the audience. Shakespeare did this all the time. Yeah. It's like the chorus in the ancient Greek plays. A chorus? But this isn't a musical! Just because there's a chorus doesn't mean it's a musical. And why would there be a chorus? See, that's what I'm trying to explain. Well then get on with it already! We have a story to tell here. Right! The story! Where were we? I... You were about to explain the meaning of the chorus to us! I meant this story! The play, remember? The murder and all? I, for one, don't feel like I can continue until you explain this chorus business and that side thing you keep pulling. I'm gonna have to second this one. What are you doing here? I just wanted to hear what you guys were talking about. Oh, good heavens! Well, what about the audience? They've already paid their money. How do they know this isn't the story they came to see anyway? Because we already told them it was a murder mystery. Oh, yeah. But what I want to know is what the course is for if it's not for singing. <sighs> Folks, please bear with us for a moment. I promise this won't take but a minute. And we'll get right back to our story. Thank you. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank, thank you. you. What are we thanking them for? <sighs> as I said, as the narrator, I will often speak to the audience as the story unfolds, much like the Greeks did in their place thousands of years ago. But there, they most often used what is known as a chorus. But they didn't sing. They may have in some cases, but they didn't have to. You see, it wasn't the delivery that was important, it was the message. What was the message? It would depend on the story, but what's important to understand now, and how this relates to the statements to the audience that you've witnessed today, is why the chorus was there in the first place. Well, why were they there? First and foremost, to help the story move ahead. Why not just let the characters tell the story through dialogue? Well, they probably could. But when a story is very complex, it would take hour after hour of dialogue just to set the stage for the events about to happen. But if someone or a group of people, a chorus, were to fill in some of the background and details as the story goes along, the audience gets all the facts. And then the most important parts of the story can be played out on the stage through dialogue. Oh yeah! I don't get it. Yeah, what are you talking about? The chorus, or in this case, a narrator, provides details and information that may not be readily apparent to the audience, but are important to understanding the story as a whole. But why do you keep talking to the audience? To help the story move ahead. It sounds like a way for you to get in some extra lines and try to upstage everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah what's that all about? You've been having half the life. It is whole nothing like that. It is nothing like that. Everything I say has been carefully crafted by the playwright. Every line, stage direction, and each aside has been thought out and written down. And for the story to work, it must be followed precisely. Do you seem to have a lot of lines? And some of your speeches are even leaning towards soliloquies. That is not true. No? Then why is it that your lines pop up every other time? Yet we have to play round robin. I don't know. I'm just an actor doing my lines as written. If you want to take issue with the quantity and occurrences of your lines, talk to the writer. Maybe you already did. And that's why you have all the best lines. <laughs> this is getting too ridiculous. We have a story to tell, and I think it would be best if we got back to it. That's easy for you to say, but with having the leading role in all. I don't yeah, have the leading Mr. role. Fancy pants. I don't have the leading role. Then who does? Well, I would say it's Steve. Steve, the lead? But, but, but he's dead. Not yet, he isn't. Yeah, not yet, I'm not. But he will be, and he hardly has any lines. 
Yeah, what about that? I have more lines than Steve. Quantity of lines isn't the only factor in making the lead character. Oh my god. Now what are you talking about? The number of lines spoken is no criteria for calling someone the lead character. Oh yeah, then what is? The lead character, or protagonist, is the one who gives all the other characters a reason to be here. This is way too technical. I'm bored. Okay, okay, we've gotten way off track again. Let's just get back to our story, the one the audience came to see, and try to entertain them to the best of our abilities. Remember, every part is important to the whole of the story, no matter how large or how small. Was that a shot at me? No! I'm just trying to get the story back on track, and at the same time appease your delicate actor egos. Oh. Okay then. May I continue now? Yes. yes. Sure, go ahead. And you're all okay with my being the narrator and speaking in asides to the audience? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Actors. Now, where was I? We, we did the, the introductions. Uh, oh, right, right, right. As I was saying, none of these folks care much for each other. And they had all been called here by Stephen Walters for reasons yet unknown. But I know why. What are you doing? Well, I felt it my responsibility to interject and draw attention to myself, being the star and all. Star? That's it, now I've heard it all. Next you'll be telling us that the only reason these people came here is to see you. That's it. That's it! There is no way half the audience is your fan. I am through! No way! People, people, please! Please, just calm down. And Steve, get out! May I get you anything? May I get you anything? <clears throat> May I get you anything? Are you talking to them? Or us? To you. I am the butler, after all. May I get you anything? Oh, right. No, I'm fine. Anyone else? No. Nah. Root beer. What? I'd... I'd like a root beer? <laughs> You're supposed to say no. How's that? When I say anyone else, you're supposed to say no. I am? Yes! Really? Yes! But I'm... but I'm thirsty! What? You need to get with it, Jennifer! We do have a story to tell, after all! But I really am thirsty. You know, so am I! People! Me too. People! You know, now that you mention it, I'm kind of thirsty too. People! I'm kind of thirsty too, John. People! What are you doing? Last, if we wanted anything, and we said no. As you should! But we actually are thirsty. But you're not supposed to be! It's not part of the script! Oh, really now? And what has been part of the script so far? I really don't think that this is the time nor the place to get into that, Jennifer. We need to finish the story. Are you going to get us something to drink? No, I am not going to get you something to drink! But what I am going to do is try my best to keep the story moving ahead, no matter what the rest of you try to do. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know what? Uh, Steve's right. We gotta get this thing back on track. Before you go, why did Steve call us here tonight? I am only the butler, and to that I do not know. And as the narrator? To that I cannot say. Oh, we've been waiting here ten minutes now, and we still haven't seen Steve. I just wonder if this is one of his practical jokes again, and he's, he hasn't even shown up. He wouldn't. Would he? He might. He loves to control us and show he has complete control over every one of us. He certainly does not control me. I don't even know why you're here, dear. I am here because Steve wishes me to be here, dear. 
And truth be told, I'm pretty sure it's for more than just my presence. What? What? What was that? What do you mean? That little thing just now. Yeah, what was that all about? Well, as... Well, I was trying to do one of those asides like John was doing earlier. Oh, good heavens! This whole thing has become one big farce! We might as well just wander around incessantly babbling and then send these kind people home. <laughs> what a spoil while. sport you are! I think you're jealous! Jealous? Of what? Of my superior acting and ab living ability that I used oh, to yeah. carry you and this entire cast through this play! You've got to be kidding! I've seen you, all of you, looking at me in awe. <laughs> if that's short for awful, then you're right. <laughs> Are you? You? More superior ad living, I see. All right. Apologize now, Preston. I don't think I will, Betty. Jennifer, make him apologize. Apologize yourself. Freeze! This is the police! I've got you all covered! The police? You're not a cop! I just always wanted to say that. <laughs> oh, brother! That's what this whole place has been full of! After you know, everything you've done, just been trying to upstage and hijack this entire place! I'm sick of all you attention seekers, you're gonna get it! Whoa, 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 whoa! Stop, 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 stop! Stop now. Come on, guys. Let's just all put our guns down, all right? It's just to play you guys. Come on, that's all. I mean, please, guys, it isn't worth it. I mean, you've got so much to live for. Well, this is where you came in. The gunshots, the body falling, the butler with a gun. With a little mystery, a little suspense, and a little humor, this has been the murder of Stephen Walters. It has been a pleasure having you here to share our story with you today. And we sincerely hope that you've enjoyed being with us as the audience as much as we, as the actors, have enjoyed you. Thanks for coming and have a great night. Goodbye. Bye. Adios. <laughs> Thank you.